Welcome to Clout 941, the only live television show on Sarasota politics and issues. I'm Ron Filipkowski, and tonight we've got a great show. we got uh, State Representative Keith Fitzgerald as our guest, and we want to give him as much time as we can, so we'll try to get through the news as quick as possible. You know, last week's show was on Sarasota Police Chief uh, Pete Abbott and his problems, and we had our guest on, uh, Derek Bird, who actually called for his resignation, as a lot of people are. And, now, I've given this a lot of thought, and I've known Chief Abbott a long time. I know the job that he's done, and I know the, the screw-up here was big. But I, I really have reflected a lot about this, and I really think, on balance, he should not resign, and he should not be fired. On balance, he's a good chief. He's done a good job. I think he's going to learn from this experience a lot, and I think uh, he will not be so reflexive to defend his officers against excessive force complaints, many of which over the years have been unfounded, which were legitimate. I think they'll be taken more seriously. He's learned his lesson, but his body of work as a chief is good, and, and he should stay, I think. Second, no politics, please, in the post office closings. Remember the base commission, uh, the uh, military base commissions back in the 80s? They needed to close a lot of the military bases in the 90s after the Cold War. And all the congressmen said, no, not in my district, not my base. And, and finally, they came up with a commission to close, uh, recommend the bases to be closed. And Congress agreed that they were going to approve that list. And, um, and I think that's the way to take politics out of this stuff. Same thing for these post offices. The mail, the mail is way down because of the internet, uh, mail delivery around the United States. And the United States Post Office needs to close a lot of branches. And three in this area have been recommended to be closed. And of course, Vern Buchanan, like a lot of the congressmen around the country, are fighting to keep their local branchers open. Uh, but look, no, take the politics out of this. We need, this is an area where the post office is saying, we don't need these branches. Let's listen to what they have to say. Next, we have an opportunity in this community to create a new uh, jail site. But it's not just a regular jail. It's going to be a model uh, for, for other corrections facilities around the state of Florida to follow. A lot of time and energy and study is put into this. What we need is a community correction center in order to get people out of the system. We have an opportunity to put that in place. The funding, both federal and state, is in place. The problem is we can't agree on where to put it. We have the money to do it. The Criminal Justice Commission has worked hard. They've come up with sites. And every time a local neighborhood association has stepped forward and said, not in my neighborhood. The County Commission does not appear to want to deal with this issue. The Criminal Justice Commission is sticking their necks out and making these recommendations. Look, this is something where somebody's going to need to step up to the plate. We need to get this built. Our community is being hindered by the, the explosion of prescription drug abuse, home invasion robberies for drugs. This is the kind of center we need. It's the, exactly the kind of innovative thing we've needed for years. And now the only thing stopping it are community organizations that are keeping it from being built in their neighborhood. We've got to find a spot for this. Next, the, the last news item is, look, we have continued to see an erosion of civil liberties in the United States and in the state of Florida, and it's troubling. We now have statutes that, that allow officers to pull people over for not having a seatbelt on, for playing their stereo too loud, for having their window tint too, too loud. And now we have the new, the new movement, which is allow police officers to pull people over for texting. We're also talking about red light cameras. These are all legitimate, valid things. But the problem is it puts too much discretion in the hands of law enforcement officers to choose who to pull over and who not. We all know every day we can drive around and see dozens of cars with illegal window tint. Some get pulled over, some don't. The problem is, is that it puts too much discretion into the hands of police officers to pull people over virtually unfettered when you, when you add in all these new statutes and, and these new regulations. And then when you add in the court costs and the fees that have tripled in the last five years, it just becomes a brutal system. Now to our guest, State Representative Keith Fitzgerald. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Keith, can you uh, tell us a little bit before we get to politics about your background, your family, and, and your career? Sure. I grew up in Louisville, Kentucky. I was actually born in Ohio, but I moved to Louisville when I was very young. Grew up there, went to the University of Louisville. It's a great basketball school. I uh, did well in school. Um, there's an inside uh, deal among college professors that we recruit our, who we think are our best students to go to graduate school. So a couple of my professors uh, recommended me to go to graduate school. I went 
I uh, went to uh, Indiana University and received a PhD. Uh, received a job at uh, Grinnell College, a small college in Iowa. Uh, worked there for a few years. Uh, rural life didn't agree with me, so I went looking for a job. And I came here. I have a wife and two kids, uh, and I love Florida. I took a big pay cut, actually, to come uh, to the new College of Florida. Grinnell College happens to be, per capita, one of the richest colleges in the country, in part yeah. because Warren Buffett was on their uh, board uh, <laughs> back uh, before people knew who Warren Buffett was and ran $17 million up into about a billion over a 20-year period. Uh, but I never regretted that pay cut because I think this is a great community and I like where I work. What do you teach? Uh, I'm a political scientist. Uh, my actual area of specialization is something called American political development. And what that tries to do is look at the interplay between ideas and institutions and policies over time. Uh, in a sense, it's how political culture, which is something by definition uh, it, it is something that's durable and changes slowly, does change, uh, and the way that those three factors play into those changes. You know, a criticism we often hear about, you know, college professors is the old joke, uh, those who can do, those who can't teach, and, and that they all, they're all immersed in theory but not in practicality. Well, you decided to actually jump into the political system and become a state representative. What made you want to sort of get involved and get your hands dirty in politics? Well, I'll tell you, I, I, uh, I don't have any huge ambition to launch a political career. Uh, the story behind it is fairly simple. Uh, from time to time, I would be invited to give a talk before very, uh, various different kinds of groups. Uh, the television stations would ask me to be a political analyst, their on-camera expert. Uh, I would always be as objective and professional as you're taught to be as a political scientist. You're really not taking sides. You're just calling it as you see it and using analytical skills. Uh, after one particularly very bad election for the Democrats, uh, one of the Democratic clubs asked me to give a talk, and I said, well, I'll do it, but I'd like to give a pep talk because I think people are dispirited. So I'm not really going to do the political analyst role. Uh, I got a huge reaction and I think what I discovered is that I had a, a skill uh, that I'd really not been working on for a long time which is an ability to communicate to people beyond the cold theoretical analytical way of looking at politics that I was trained to do uh, and also to talk about it more broadly in values. Now it's really useful to have a lot of training in political theory as I do uh, but uh, from that point forward, people continually told me that they thought I should run. Uh, and so in a sense, I was dragged kicking and screaming into it. Uh, and I got to a point where I felt like the country wasn't going in a great direction. People were dispirited. Um, they're not crazy about the process. This is a phenomenon that's not just re uh, limited to one party or another. And I felt like I had to put my money where my mouth was, that if I thought that the process wasn't working well and people thought I had a contribution to make, that I really had an obligation to try to do that. So I stepped out of the classroom and got in the game. All right. Well, time for our first break. When we come back, we'll uh, have some more questions for State Representative Keith Fitzgerald.